Um, yeah, well, very warm welcome in the workshop uh, Accessibility and Diversity. Um, let's have an inspiring panel with fantastic guests in the next hour, which is live stream to all over the world, hopefully beyond the borders of Europe. Um, who is talking and who is hosting and who is moderating? Uh, I would like to introduce Julia Vigna Hesse. Um, uh, she's director and dramaturg, works internationally, and she's the vice president of Arzitation Germany. Yes, hello. Thank you, Stefan, and a very warm welcome also from my part. I'm very happy and honored to be co-hosting this session with Stefan, my colleague, who is the artistic director of Junges Schauspielhaus Düsseldorf and a member of the executive committee of Esite International. Anything else about him, I think you might find in the program of the forum, or you can ask him later in the virtual bar. So um, just one, one word, this goofy looking helmet is because it's really noisy in my place and I don't want you to be bothered. So I'm sorry I look like this today. <laughs> now I have the immense pleasure to shortly introduce the fantastic guests we are having in our workshop today. And I would like to start with Yvette Hardy. Yvette Hardy is a South African theater director, producer, educator and advocate focusing on theater for young audiences. She is the president of the Global TYA Association, Azite International, and is using this position in the past and present to create opportunities for artistic exchange and cross-cultural collaboration around the world. And especially, she is making theater an open space and stage for diverse voices and stories. Welcome, Yvette. Farnas Ababi, he is artistic director of the famous Unga Clara Theater in Stockholm. Uh, she works as a director in Sweden and internationally for 20 years. And the way how she deals with access and diversity changed the landscape, at least in Sweden. So we are very curious to hear about what you, uh, what you are thinking and doing in your theater and what you're proposing. Welcome. Hello, and last but not least, uh, I would like to introduce Constanza Makras, who is uh, the artistic director of the internationally acknowledged company Dorky Park in Berlin. It's an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary wow, ensemble that works with dance, text, live music and film, and consequently, her creations not only combine artists from various disciplines, but often are site-specific pieces and installations. And one of Constance's issues is radical change of the theater sector towards more diversity, less barriers, and more artistic courage. So let's see how this goes. Welcome, Constanza, but I can't see her. So let's, maybe she's, she's getting in. Uh, and let's start um, with the issue of accessibility. And let's start with Yvette Hardy. Um, uh, let, let us say that every person has the right to participate in the arts and uh, access means to create a space for everybody to participate, having choices, uh, but maybe we are far away from that. How can we build better access? My question to Yvette is, um, um, how can we, uh, how can we uh, make theaters more accessible and maybe what can we learn from the theater for the young audiences that where you know a lot about from all over the world? Um, so how can we create spaces that are more accessible? And what can we learn from the theater for young audiences? Yvette. Thank you. Thanks, Stefan. And thanks so much for this opportunity. Um, I, th I think to start off, obviously, we recognize that the European theater space is incredibly diverse. And, you know, we're not talking about uh, when we talk about access to something, we're not talking about a one size fits all kind of access because we have to recognize that we're dealing with everything from the independent freelancer through to the permanent uh, repertory companies through to the big state funded institutions. And all of these spaces may need to deal with access in different ways. I do think though that the, one of the key things that needs to happen um, anywhere in the world is the development of a functional kind of artistic ecosystem. So that these different parts of 
the theater uh, space and um, institutions and uh, organizations speak to one another and work with one another in strategizing. And so this is what makes this conversation such an exciting one because hopefully it's bringing together all the different role players from these different sectors to try and construct some kind of common vision. I think the second thing is to think about how we can reclaim the space of theater as being really central to public discourse as that space in which ideas are tested are reframed that it's that space of meeting and exchange between all parts of society and that in the process of that meeting and exchange we are able to do community building essentially and, and forge new communities where perhaps those communities were not possible before so i think that right now um, one of the key things is to be outward looking rather than inward looking as a theatre community. We need to have real curiosity about our audiences, about who they are or who they might be, why they are or aren't interested in what it is that we are creating, and, and how to have a genuine dialogue with that audience. And I think that one of the things that sets theatre for young audiences apart from, and in some respects ahead of, the rest of the theatre scene is specifically its genuine curiosity and interest in its audience. You know, theatre for young audiences recognises that theatre is not unidirectional. It is a communication. Um, it is a conversation. It's an act of collective meaning making. And in order to communicate successfully with that audience, we have to engage long before the work reaches the stage in the process of dreaming the work, in the process of making the work, in the process of empowering the audience to engage with some of the processes that we might be using. So essentially to almost democratize the process of art making um, and of then being active respondents to whatever the work is and to then have an impact on that work. So um, that the work is in constant uh, exchange with its audience um, as it's being received. Often when we talk about an engaged audience in TYA, we're not only thinking about an audience that has its eyes wide open and its full attention on the stage. What we're also talking about is an audience that actively participates in some way in the performance, after the performance, in some activity related to the performance. And then we, we see that engagement continue into the everyday life of the child. So often we'll get reports from parents, from teachers of how you know, um, ideas that were, were uh, teased out in the production are emerging in children's play or in their conversation long after the event. So it's the sense of theatre really being embedded in the society. And I think that one of the ways that TYA does this is that it has always gone about engaging its audiences in, in non-traditional spaces, as well as in the theatre spaces. So we've sought out audiences in creches, in schools, in medical facilities, in after-school programs, in refugee camps, in community spaces. And now during COVID in people's homes through Zoom or through social media platforms. Um, so it takes theater into the, these alternative spaces and then in so doing creates collaborations with unlikely partners to reach new audiences. And I think that's also important is looking again, looking outward, looking beyond just the theater community for our partnerships, finding the ways in which we can uh, engage with the broader society in order to access um, a, a wider audience. And then, as I mentioned with TYAs, this idea of, of really working with the audience. Um, and I, I think, you know, so often uh, we will look at an audience uh, and we'll say, oh, we're playing to the converted, we're playing to those people who've been engaged with the arts before. So you see someone who has studied the arts goes on to be a good audience member. Well, doesn't that tell us something? That actually we need people to be engaged with the actual doing of the arts to demystify that, um, that kind of engagement of what theatre might be so that they can feel the transformation for themselves. They can feel the kind of magic that we, that we are creating and understand something of it in order to want to access it more deeply. So I think really seeing audiences as a partner to the work, um, as active co-creators, as dramaturgs, as, um, as part of the conversation is, is vital. Um, and then I think also, and, and this comes back to the question of space is, 
in the South African experience, you know, so often we are working outside of that specially designed cocoon with all the technology and design that is uh, possible within a theater space. But we nevertheless are making magic and that magic might be happening in a rough way on township streets or in a school classroom. Um, but what that magic does is it transforms a space that perhaps was a space of poverty or of lack or of conflict. It transforms it into something else. And what that does is it empowers the audience to see that change is possible. So it makes theater a real interaction with the society um, and a, a, you know, a, potentially a profound contributor to social change. Um, so yes, I mean, I think those are some of the things that I wanted to draw attention to just as an, in an opening statement um, that we really do need to think about space, we need to think about process, and we need to think about uh, all the barriers to access that we might be putting up, um, you know, in, in order to, um, to fully diversify and, and make our work accessible. Thank you very much, Yvette. So many things to discuss in this dialogue, talking about looking beyond the, uh, the, the places or more participation, demystify uh, um, our sector for to, to have more access to it. So there's many things to do. Are there, are there already some questions from the Q&A from the chat? Julia? Not so far, no, but uh, maybe we could tell you that uh, there is the chance of all of you who are in the, in the auditorium here, you can put your questions to Yvette or later Farnas and Constanza to, to us in the chat and then I will grab them and ask them here and Yvette and the others can answer to them. So if you have any question right now, just pop it in or otherwise I suggest maybe we move on and if you have any question, just write it and we will ask later. It's okay? Yes. Perfect. So then I would uh, pass over to Farnas Ababi for this moment. We will come back to Yvette um, uh, in this session. Um, Farnas, um, you, uh, you changed your theater uh, when, you, when you started to be artistic director. So um, uh, can you tell us, uh, because I, I see it a bit of a role model of more accessibility or diversity, but let's talk, firstly talk about accessibility. Um, so what did you do in Unga Clara when you started your work and what are your experience with the, the question of more accessibility? Thank you, Stefan. Um, and good morning, everyone. And thank you for inviting me to this important and very interesting conference. My name is Farnas Arbabi and I've been working as a stage director and playwright in Sweden for about 20 years. And uh, I've worked a lot with diversity and inclusion and uh, actively worked to make the Swedish theater um, a space for inclusion and for diversity. Um, trying to work with uh, the whiteness in Swedish theater mainly. Um, trying to change what stories and whose stories are being told and also changing who is telling the story on stage and behind the stage. And my plays tend to focus on existential topics such as identity, migration, exile, queerness and power structures. And, and six years ago, I was appointed the artistic leadership of Unga Clara, which is a renowned theater for young audiences. And it's located in the city center of Stockholm. And it has been a groundbreaking theater since it was founded in 1975 by legendary director Susanne Alston. And the theater is built on the idea that children are fully capable of understanding and experiencing art. And that art doesn't necessarily need to be edifying or wholesome or, um, or even um, kind. It's also, we also work with the idea that the children want to talk about so-called difficult topics, um, the, the things that adults might want to protect them from. So Unga Clara uh, is also famous for doing plays um, on themes that are considered to be too tough for children to deal with. 
We have a history of working very closely to our audience and we strive to have an intersectional perspective on power structures, also including the child perspective in this. And acknowledging that children are a marginalized group in society that have very little power over their lives. Um, so we also need to actively have this in mind when we work with our audience. Anas, so, can yes? I, I have a big question. Uh, how did you institutionalize this intersectional perspective, including, including the audience? Uh, is, there, is there a forum? Is there a gremium, gremium where, you, where you discuss? Or how, how do you, did you do it uh, as a process? We, we do it in different ways, you might say. We have uh, our method is mainly built on three, three pillars. Uh, we, we use the perspective. We acknowledge the power that we have when we meet the audience. And we also work very closely with the audience. So we have uh, many meetings with the audience during the rehearsals, but also before we start rehearsing, even maybe before the idea is born. And in on, when we meet the audience, we don't work with trying to show them the theater to ask them what is good and bad. It's more a conversation, uh, maybe based on the topics of the play uh, sometimes just to uh, understand what the important things in their lives are and trying to make them more a part of the process making of the theater. Are children uh, suggesting issues and topics that you uh, raise or uh, are you doing, uh, are, are you sometimes getting uh, suggestions? Sometimes they do. And sometimes we have our own idea of what we want to talk about and we, we do some sort of um, um, we try to examine the topic from their perspective and see what how to uh, how to get close to it and what part of the topic might be important for them in their lives but it's not so much um, the actual choosing of the topics more as mm -hmm. to find a way to communicate the feedback um, yeah. mm -hmm. mm. It's communication, but this is also made possible in our rehearsal processes because we have we work with longer rehearsal processes than other theaters do. Um, and we also work with trying to get input from other expertise areas and the experts and researchers that might be connected to the topics that we have chosen for the, the play that we're working on. Are you sometimes leaving your theater and going to rural areas or to other places? Yes, we do. Um, we work very closely towards the schools. So we have a lot of contact with uh, the pedagogues and the teachers in order to get the children to come to the theater. Or we go to the schools, meet the children. And we also do other sorts of visits. Uh, we are based in Stockholm, but uh, two years ago we were appointed uh, by the Swedish government. We were appointed a national theater for young audiences, which means that we now have a national assignment. So we work, uh, our work is aimed towards the whole, all the children in Sweden and not only in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. So we do go to other areas as well. Mm -hmm. Questions from the chat, from Julia? I have one question. I don't know for who it is, but uh, either of you can maybe answer. Um, it's, are there any special theater programs or fundings for projects focusing on better accessibility? So is there support from the politics? I can answer for Sweden. Uh, there are different projects and different uh, funding that you can apply for. Um, they are not always uh, aimed at the artistic expression or the topic of the theme. They could be more about how to practically make the theater more accessible in terms of different uh, types of aids for the audience that might need um, maybe support for children with autism, nonverbal aid support, um, or maybe working with translation into sign language or blind interpretation, uh, which we often also try to do. We sometimes do it in the theater, but we uh, always try to collaborate so that we can make this possible. At Unia Clara as well. So we will come back. Yeah, Julia? No, it's, I just, I, I don't, if Yvette wants to add something from South Africa, maybe? Mm, sure. I mean, within South Africa, access is a very important issue. And um, a lot of times funding will be de 
determined by what audience you're going to be able to speak to in that funding. So for example, the provincial areas that are uh, away from the formal theatre structures tend to be prioritised in the funding at the moment. And um, spaces that are non-formal spaces um, are also prioritised at the moment because there's a feeling that um, while the, the theatres that are in, in cities can to some extent work on a commercial model, um, if we're talking about the deeper rural areas or, or um, you know, less served provinces, they need the support. So a lot of funding is going towards that kind of access. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's, um, let's integrate Constanza Macras into the dialogue uh, for the moment. We will uh, uh, come back. Constanza, in your work, you're, uh, you, you said, you said uh, to me that um, uh, is Constanza already there? Yes, Constanza. yes, I'm there. I'm there. Yeah, can we see you? <laughs> ah. um, okay. uh, Constanza, you, you, you sometimes said that, that theater needs, uh, uh, looking at accessibility and diversity, uh, needs a radical change. You said it's, it's, not, it's not consequent what is done uh, until now in the theaters you know, and you do it different, you try to do it different. So what, is the, what is your critical and radical position? And, what are you doing differently? Well, I, don't, I don't know if it's radical. I think it's just part of like uh, understanding what is diversity, what is accessibility, accessibility, and what is called state theater. When I was explaining this, the example of the Stadttheater in Germany, the state theaters that are um, that are. Um, I have to say, is he gone? I have to say goodbye. Shit. Okay. okay. Uh, that. Uh, um, for example, you know, like if, if I was working in Dusseldorf, it's a city with a big community of like people from Ghana, a big Japanese community, and there is nothing in the theater that speaks for people from these countries or, this, or these cultures, and it's, so there is no connection from the state theater to the community. So you know, the city doesn't go to the theater. Basically, that's what happens. You know that you cannot call it the state theater, and then people don't go there because it's only it's just a focus in one in a very specific audience that is playing shows that are more than hundred years old. And that's, don't talk about the di the dynamism of a city, you know. And uh, and the, uh, it's very difficult for people to understand immigration when they're not at risk, you know. When people talks about you know the refugees and people, they think this is a, like you know, and they don't even address the communities that are living in the city, like culturally, you know. So you say you want like those communities need to be addressed culturally, and it's not like not as minorities permanently, but as citizens of this of the place where they you know they inhabit. They're not, uh, you know, it's always this sort of tokenism, you know, in um, in, act, in the idea of, of inclusion, you know, and it's always becoming a little bit token, you know, like a little bit like, okay, uh, now we have somebody who's diverse, you know what I mean? And if this person who's diverse, it should be part of the landscape, not, uh, you know, and not just addressed as diverse, you know, women, we don't to be addressed as women all the time, you know, I mean, although we're women, you know, of course, but, you know, for example, for me, I find it very very simple example that very, I find it very complicated when people says Kamala Harris is the first female president, like vice president. And I find it like, well, she's a lawyer. She does all these other things. You know what I mean? And I think it's also like a, a problem of how we focus on, on differences. You know, I mean, I think some things they have to, we still, we have to start to normalize in the good sense that, you know, we need more, things need to be more more inclusive but like part of our life like inclusive as part of our life inclusive mm -hmm. not as like oh look we're including somebody and we make like a thing about it you know i found that very you know that's why it's always like this thing that you know people also make special shows to address communities you know and it's like no you know this this is like always like you know making like a big marker of like yeah i mean there is differences but there's also a lot of similitudes you know and, and there's also like this very subtle ways of people including themselves in a society which are interesting you know and that we always over oversee so for me that's like what is it that, that what i'm aiming trying you know to to when i work i'm trying to think about that that you know like i look at the people i work not like oh and now i'm like anthropologically you know, because it has something like that European theater that it goes like, oh, look, this is the people from here or there, you know, and I'm an immigrant, immigrant myself. And I'm like, I feel like, OK, well, I, I mean, my German is still not very good. My son is always correcting me. 
you know, and I'm like a very much like an example, like my grandparents were in Argentina, my European grandparents who went to Argentina, you know, and started their whole life and they didn't speak Spanish, you know, I mean, and where are we? We're a country which was colonized, you know, and it was like, you know, so, you know, histories are so complex. We cannot just, you know, people, our backgrounds, each background is very complicated, you know, and I feel like we need to, you know, I think like the, the addressing the difference all the time and putting the, the, the point on the difference, sometimes it's not exactly the way I will go about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Can you explain the word tokenism a bit more? What do you mean? Yeah, it's like, you know, like you're like, oh, we need a woman who is not from Europe, you know, and then you are like the only one, you know, basically, and that they call it token, you know? I mean, like, oh, we need a person from Russia, the diverse, you know, uh, we need, you know, so it's like always like having like, you know, like you're like the person who, uh, as your you yourself you're like the, the the sort of like the flag of inclusion you know so then you're like you know you're you are like held as in but at the same time show uh, you know like you're, you're the included person and the only one kind of thing you know so and i mean i had it by example you know i don't know like recently i, I was uh, holding a, a speech in a com in a theater festival and I, and they called me two days before the opening and it was very late actually you know the opening speech and it's because probably they realized that there was no women anyway like they only have one artist women and they were like oh wow we mm -hmm. need a woman who's not european you know and it really <laughs> felt that way you know and i mean and i this happened to me not one time but many times you know but i mean i'm still what considers you know white you know so it's like you know then and i mean but still, you know, I'm not European, you know, and it's like, I feel like those, you know, those kind of bells ringing behind, which is very uncomfortable, you know, because I mean, at the end, you know, I'm doing artistic work and uh, I mean, and that what is important is what you think and what you do, you know, I mean, and, uh, and what you create as an artist, you know, and um, yes, so it's a bit, you know, like, um, when it's when you're called like two days before the opening with something that is planned for a really long time, it's it is funny actually. And then you you know it's it's like an important speech that one you know it's the only speech you held you know there's not even politicians talking you know so you better say something interesting I think. But it was okay you know I was really happy and I said okay wow well, this is exactly what I need to talk about you know why there's no more inclusion of women in the program which is very obvious you know but uh, that there was only one female artist in the whole program in a big <laughs> European festival. Well, I I'm would like, be curious how, to read know, how these things can, <laughs> how can this still happen? You know, how this can still happen? You know? and for me, it's absurd. It's like, you know, we cannot even like, you know, it, it is like, we need to like really be very strict. I mean, every in every day's conduct and life of like way of we work as artists and programmers or whatever is we need to include that. It's like a daily practice. It's something that you, until, you know, it becomes part of your, you know, functioning, you know, yeah. the functioning of your structure, you know, and this is the only way you can start to change it. So. Any questions from the chat, Julia? There is a question, but it's too far enough. So I don't know, do you want another question to Constanza first or? Yeah, uh, let's, for, uh, let's uh, wait for that for a moment. Uh, just one question, last thing, because we start to, to go into the, the complete dialogue. <laughs> um, uh, Constanza, in your work, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's dance and theater, so it's not using so much the languages, so it's, there's a lot of possibilities for access. How do you use that language to, for, for more accessibility? Like movement language or uh, speaking language? No, the moving language. It's, it's oh, moving language is like, okay, well, because I use both, no? I mean, I, I use also like a lot of text. I mean, text is always like performing different languages, you know, and it's subtitle and, uh, you know, that, uh, I mean, and then um, a movement language is something that we develop, you know, we try to, we, we work with um, casts, which are like, you know, as many times, mm -hmm. like from many different places. And we look for like a common, uh, you know, when it's about something, you know, like when we think about certain qualities of movement that they can picture, because if, uh, for me, dance is very abstract in a way, you know, it's that like you cannot, uh, you know, enunciate with movement what you will do with words. And that's a good thing, actually. So, I mean, what we look for is like, like, for example, if we're like working on the subject of memory or whatever, like, you know, we just look for things that unify our, uh, the, the people's dance style in some kind of like, lingering idea, you know? And then you can see people's, people has everybody their take on movement. So you see a lot of how people naturally moves, but you know, they also like move together into some kind of creation, you know? And I think that uh, creates, you know, we, I work in creating like an artistic space where everybody feels 
connected, you know, and with their input, mm-hmm. with their movement, you know. So I think like for me, it's more like finding this common place where we, I will, even because every movement language is different, you know, because I, I don't mm-hmm. come and say to people, okay, you go to the right, you go to the left, I work with their own movement, you know. So I just basically mm-hmm. make them develop things, you know, through ideas I have about, you know, improvisation ideas or movement ideas, but they, where they found their own voice within those ideas, you know. So mm-hmm. it's not like I'm telling people what to do exactly. I don't, you know. So for me, it's more like how to to mediate that to happen. That it, you know, it has like some kind of coherence, you know, within a, within a concept, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and at the same time keeps the individuality of individuality of people, you know, yeah. and their background. And not stressing the differences, but stressing the common language uh, that you have yeah. in the diversity. Yeah. 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 Julia, are, um, are, there, are there questions in the chat? <laughs> yes, woo. yes. Uh, there's actually one uh, open question to all of uh, our panelists. And maybe you could just, as the time is advancing, just give a statement to it because it's nice. The question is, um, are there any sticky subjects? Like what are the difficulties in this area of access and points that you feel uncomfortable when you're trying to, to do this in your work? Well, yeah, there's a lot of things which are difficult to talk about, you know, I mean, like recently I was approached by an actress who talked to me about domestic violence, you know, because she said that she was, uh, she was victim of it. And for me, that's, uh, that, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying you shouldn't work about that, you should work about that, you know, but, you know, it's how contextualized, you know, in which way you work about these subjects, you know, and how you, to, to take the importance, you know, and to be like really um, honor the important how important that is also i was approached to direct um, you know a show about the murder of emmett till this man who was lynched in america you know the black man you know and it's like i felt like as a white director it was very weird because it was a all black group of art, like german residents you know i mean okay they took me as a south american immigrant but i found it also like it was for me weird to do that because i felt like uh, yeah, I just felt that there would have been a black person directing, I felt, in that subject, because it was very specific, you know, and it's like very weird. And, you know, I feel like somehow that that was a bit, uh, I, I didn't feel like it was completely my space. Uh, and I also, for example, I think like things you have to be, you have to honor and be serious about it, you know, always, you know, so, I mean, it's the sticky subject is like how to find your honesty and serious, seriousness about, you know, and without, uh, exploiting anything you know and be, be, because everything you know which is difficult has a exploitation corner for me you know and this is very very difficult and it's uh, like what you need to think about a lot you know so. Anas, what would you um, uh, answer to the question well i think uh, one difficulty uh, that i've um, met during my work with um, trying to uh, destroy the white uh, dominancy in the theater is the question of bringing up the privilege because in order to show what diversity means or representation means you need to talk about you need to talk about the differences um, and what happens with people when they when they understand their privilege and and need to step away from that and also uh, when we work with we work we try to aim our work a lot to the underprivileged areas in uh, around in sweden and uh, when we see the impact of uh, when when the young audiences come to the theater and see the actors that they can uh, relate to, uh, it creates some sort of. Um, sometimes when we do the performances, the the children when they stay and they want to talk with the actors, the white actors are very alone because nobody wants to talk to them. Everybody wants to talk to the person that they relate to and that they recognize and that told the story that they recognize. So. It's uh, sometimes it's hard to talk about privilege, and this um, this is something a sticky point I think in the work. When you're the trying discussion, to get, uh, discussion is strongly starting uh, in Germany. Some other countries are much um, more much more advanced in this. Yvette, uh, what is your experience with this mm, talking about uh, privileges? Yeah, I mean, building on what Fanaz has just said, I mean, I think you know we we we're starting to talk about diversity and. Uh, we can't really talk about diversity without talking about equity and you know that's that's really the key thing and i think it also speaks back to what constanza was saying about tokenism so that if we speak about diversity it's very easy to talk to, to fall into that trap of of tokenism of ticking boxes of you know just ensuring that there, there's some sort of representation of somebody there but 
real diversity surely is about real equity and that requires flexibility it requires profound change it re requires um listening when you would have been talking you know it, it requires a whole lot of shifts in behavior and in often in structural formations as well um, that can be deeply uncomfortable for people and i think i think the other thing that um is is linked to this is that and it, it also links to another uh, point in the chat here um constanza was talking about creating a a kind of finding the the commonality between people and i think that that obviously is is really important but i think equally important is holding a space where tension can be apparent and can be expressed but can be held in tension with one another so in other words cre creating that kind of dialogic dynamic saying it's okay to disagree we can be the space of disagreement we can be the space where we have very different opinions on something and we can allow those, uh, we can hear them, we can allow those to be expressed in the space, and we don't necessarily have to walk away with a uh, nicely packaged message or, you know, a, a final conclusion. We can leave that in the hands of the audience. The audience can be the ones who make up their own minds about whatever it is. So I think that sometimes um, what it means is that we can't, we can't refine our messages and, and sort of, uh, dictate how we want our work to be seen. We have to allow it to be kind of open to contradiction, to different points of view, to, you know, to holding these differences in, in the work itself. Yeah, what I meant with the, sorry, what I meant with common language, you know, is it like, because we're asking about the language of dance, you know, and I was just explaining very specifically mm -hmm. about what, how people move on stage. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always disagreement and tension between the people I work and I never want mm -hmm. to also tell people what, how they should feel about what they see, you know, I'm always like, you know, for me, my shows, I would say the audience should take their own conclusions, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like not a, uh, I don't want to like I'm not a person who makes like always like very very conformative like conforming work in that sense. No? I mean, but I think like in terms of developing a, a working space together, in which like you know because I work with dancers who are like from many different backgrounds and you know and sometimes how we create movement together has to do with certain like using certain qualities and people keep their different ways of being and also like their ways they do things and you know and this tension is always there. It's about how we work together. You know, like for me, it's more about not differentiating the people and say okay you do this kind of dance and you do this kind of dance and you do this kind of dance because that's what you do it's more about that you know it's about like not making people move how people expect them to move or because of their yeah. background you know but amplifying you know the creating a space also where the ballerina doesn't have to be a ballerina you know what i mean it's like she, she studied that but she can do something else you know it's more about like an artistic space in which people has like different tools to express you know like it's, it's more like how we use uh develop the stuff you know and because we're talking specifically about movement and for me movement is always like you know it could be so many things you know and i mean and, and it's more about how we develop but for me like you know these tensions you know dramaturgically the whole thing there's always a uh, is there is disagreements and stuff like that and tensions you know that we work i mean but the, in terms of how the language of dance for me works it's interesting that it sort of generates also space within what people has as a background you know because otherwise you know you're like kind of meant to move like how you move you know like when you study something you do something and then you know normally people who work with movement either they, they did it very young like very young or they just do it amateur or like they have just capacity you know people have so many different ways of doing it you know and um and the important thing is that they don't have to be stuck in what you think they should be doing for me i mean that's mm -hmm. like a, that's how what i try to create in the working space but that's what i mean you know Let, let's go a bit deeper into this diversity issue um, we, we all would agree that every person has the right to be represented on stage and in the audience. And we are far away from that, as you already said. So it's, it's both. It's, it's bringing uh, uh, diverse and different people on the stage and tell stories which are not only the, I don't know, the common usual Central European stories, the white stories, we all know Chimamanda Andici's talk, uh, um, uh, call about uh, the danger of the single story. Um, and we all know also that you cannot change the audience without changing the program and without changing the persons who are on stage and who are responsible for the whole thing. So it's a bit, like you said, it's a big shift of everything uh, to go to towards um, diversity in equity. So, so it's clear that it's a, a huge challenge um, for um, also for the 
the theaters and for the politicians uh, if they want to bring that forward, for instance, against any new nationalism, because I think, I think diversity is the answer to nationalism. So how can we bring this forward in the next years, maybe on EU level, maybe on our, in our theaters? What would be the next steps in this very complex uh, uh, situation to go forward? Uh, uh, it's just an open question to all of you, to all three of you, who, who wants to start? You're uh, I would yeah. like to, uh, for me, well, I mean, this is like something that it should, you know, like, first of all, there should be different um, in like institutionally, not just like in the youth part of the theater, because, you know, sometimes in state theaters, you have like the younger ensemble, they make them more progressive things because they say it's just things that just young people cares about you know and uh, so then they, they have like other writers and sometimes even like you know it's a bit sad because sometimes the quality of the writers is not so good you know and uh, so they use that space in an experimental way but also like sometimes they just really don't think about the quality even you know and I think that you have to think about that actually you know there is amazing writers that you can bring in in a house you know that are like there's very a lot of like just just be a little bit investigate more you know like look mm -hmm. around uh what's happening all over the world who's writing who's doing what you know and then try to bring this stuff to the main stages to the big stages with you know and let the big actors do like a piece from a, a young uh, African writer, somebody from, you know, really this, like a Latino writer, you know, this in Argentina, we have amazing writers as well, you know, like, and start to change, you know, South America, it's like, you know, the world is very broad, there's fantastic writers everywhere, you know, so like decentralized from the European gaze, which is like what dominates the, the, the theater, state theater mostly, and start to make it not like something that you do specially, but something that you just really bring a lot of your programming. You know, mm -hmm. because if you have like a 70% and 80% of Ibsen and Shakespeare and stuff like that, you know, which has been, yeah. you know, and then you say, oh, I'm going to make it a little bit, so I'm going to make the cherry tree. This is, you see a lot, you know, we're going to make the cherry tree orchard and Lobachin is going to be Turkish, you know, and I'm like, no, that's not okay. That's not like modernizing everything. It's not like putting a Russian, putting, you know, like, I mean, this is like, you know, using all fictions to say, yeah, the, the story still works, but we just need to change, you know, that's like, yeah, of course it still works, the classics, you know what I mean? But this is like really lazy, you know? just to take, a, you know, check off forever and then put different faces on it, you know? And that's what a lot of theaters think that is progressive, that this is like including immigrants, okay? We're gonna, and I think this is like, it has to change from the thinking, you know? That's like not, not how you change, you know, the structures of dramaturgy or like representation or, you know? Because these people at the end, they still find that the piece is old, you know? Or it has nothing to do with them, you know? So it's like, you know, it's, it's very superficial, you know? So maybe you have to like, then just take a piece of Pamuk, you know, whatever, just say use, you want a Turkish play, he's, he's writing uh, novels, but then adapt a novel into the stage. I don't know, like there's so much things people can do and actually to make theater more dynamic, you know, and not just like, okay, we, you know, we're gonna do it like it was done in 400 million years, you know. You, you have a lot of space for that too. Let's keep in mind, investigate more, be more curious, yeah. uh, find yeah. more spaces for uh, writers, uh, directors and ensemble, uh, the same, of course, yeah. But yeah, also maybe is, listen to more what the actors, you know, like if you have a more, diverse cast you know and you start to look for like also you know from the schools already you start to include like a more diverse like like you know like bring you know it's gonna one thing brings the other you know like then you know you're gonna have younger actors who are like coming from the more diverse backgrounds you know and then these people will read different things and then you will yeah. listen to them and then you know slowly things will change you know like luckily not so slow because it's been very slow actually <laughs> you know? so you know yeah yeah yeah. Yes, it's slow, but it is changing. Um, I think also it, there are so many different ways to work with the diversity. Uh, representation is one of them to just count and see how many you have on stage and also with the ushers, the people that the audience meet. But of course, it needs to go up on a higher level and it needs to come out from the authors, from the directors, from the uh, CEOs at the theatres and this uh, is a process that takes time and another problem is that people at the theatre think that they can just pick someone off the street and that they will have the same experience and the same um, quality as a person that has gone to a theatre school and maybe even played theatre as a child. The whole system is, uh, we live in a society where, where racism is structural and, and the whole system is is created so that some people can 
uh, get themselves up to the top levels. So this is something that we need to work with, I think, and try to create spaces and places and an infrastructure at the theatres where we can bring in young talented people or emerging artists and give them uh, the tools that they need. We can work with mentorship programs, we can work with um, diff in the different kinds of uh, arts and not just only actors. I mean, we have in Sweden, we have uh, a lot of actors with uh, uh, that are not white, but uh, the directors you can count on one hand, um, the authors as well, light designers, none that I know of, set designers, maybe one. So this is a problem that is in the whole of the theater and not just the visual parts. Uh, so this is something we can work on. And the stories that are told, of course, also. And, and that's also something that we can work with mentorships. We can work with writing programs. Um, we can create um, uh, educations or, I mean, ways for people to come into the theater that are not the traditional because it takes so much time to change the traditional uh, ways. The schools are taking so long, so much time uh, to, to change who they are admitting and how they are um, working with it. And then even if you're admitted to a school, you are admitted into a school that works with a very Western white gaze on writing. So that's also a problem. You, you are admitted to a school, but then you feel like, okay, I was admitted here, but they want to change the whole way that I work, the whole way that I write. They want to change me, so why was I even admitted here? So we need to create those spaces and places and ways, to, the alternative ways to change, I think. And that's possible, and it's not even hard to do because we have the competence and we have the professionalism in the theater. So we just need to open up and give it away and give our, our knowledge to people who, who can use it to move forward because that's the only way to change, I think. Yvette, um, um, you, do you know way? Yeah, you, is add what, what you and, and I'm also curious about. Do you know ways, uh, uh, innovative ways for people to come into the theaters? Uh, when you look at the whole world, you are, you have been uh, traveling and seeing where, where theater is. New ways to ex to have access and ways to have more diversity in the audience. Is there? Is there something like a best practice example you, you can imagine or you can remember? Um, well, just firstly to, to pick up on what Fanaz yeah. was, was saying. And um, I mean, you know, just, I think that what that also does, I would totally agree with what she's just said. I, I think what that also does though, is it, it requires us to think differently about how we view quality and what is quality, what is good. And, and really looking to decentralize the kind of white aesthetics, the Western aesthetics that you know, have been normalized um, and to challenge ourselves on that level, um, to challenge ourselves also in the ways of working that we find comfortable. Um, and what that might mean is that we need deeper engagement, longer engagement around the work in order for the work to be truly meaningful and, and in order to really create something which is uniquely um, uh, harvesting the gifts of all, uh, you know, the diverse participants in the process essentially. So, you know, in other words, we, we've got to take, we've got to have more of a collective um, sense of uh, co-creating co co rather than a kind of a um, centralized single vision, you know, that uh, knows where it's heading before it's, <laughs> before, before it's got there. Um, so, yeah, that, that sense of longer exploration. And I think that that's also a space that can potentially then be a, a space that uh, gives training, gives support, gives development, uh, you know, for for people who have been outside the system in some way or another. And every theatre company could be doing that, you know, no matter how small. And I think that's my other point is that actually um, we can we can look at all the best practice examples from around the world. But what's most important is that we apply something locally in our own context. It's only through actually doing the work that we learn to do the work, if you know what I mean. Um, it's through engaging that um, we, we, we start to understand our particular context and how this needs to work in it. And I think my, my, my sense is sometimes that we all sort of are waiting for someone to show us the way rather than diving in and maybe making the mistakes, uh, you know, but, but, it, but in that process, hopefully becoming more inclusive and more diverse. Um, in terms of whether there are you know, particular ways of doing things um, 
around the world that can act as, um, I mean, I think that there have been so many really good examples of solidarity, not necessarily from within the theater movement, but for example, within the Black Lives Matter movement or, um, you know, within other kind of social activism movements that I think that theater could be looking at. Um, and I think that, you know, in the, in, as I said, as I said earlier, in the end, there's there's not we have to personalize our solutions. We have to look at our own context and what's going to work in our own context. Um, but we can also develop a set of principles for how we want to work um, that that we can learn from from others' experiences and try and avoid the mistakes that have been made. Thank you. Uh, Julia, are there questions? There are a lot of questions, I think. Yes, actually, now it's really a, a big discussion or there are lots of thoughts and comments being shared. And but I, I think that by your last answers, uh, Farnas and Yvette already an answered a lot about like how how to start, how to how to do this whole access thing. If you don't, if you don't, if you have no um, no no idea if you have no experience with this i think this we have already answered and there has been one uh, uh, thought um or two two thoughts i would like to share one is like uh, i think Farnas already mentioned that by changing the educational system there was the question for if we change the education the theater studies in german schools for example wouldn't it change a lot in the whole uh, in the whole process in the whole structures this is one question and another thought that I, I would like to share is um, the idea of do we always need to be understood and do we always need translation is one question like if we want to to get in, in in touch with other cultures with other with the other is it is it really necessary that I have to translate or is there a, a, a mutual understanding that maybe is not in the rational way we always think is is needed mm -hmm. So who wants to answer yeah, about the educational right. system? It, of course, it's a very, we have only another, I don't know, seven minutes to talk about the, edu talk about the ed educational system in the theaters uh, and how, it, how this could be diverse and inclusive is a big, big issue. I don't know how, what experience, I think in Sweden are the same experience like in, in, uh, in Germany or mostly the same, I'm not sure, but I would like to hear about more about uh, and I don't know what where Constanza's uh, actors are uh, coming from, which schools, maybe mostly dancing schools, which are totally diverse. So, but it's a big, it's a big issue the, the educational system. On us. Yeah, I, I also wanted to say something about language because language is also a way of working with representation and inclusion and yeah. language can often be a barrier at the theater because we, that theater is a very language based uh, art form. And I think this is also a reason why dance is more diverse, for example. And this has also been a problem with the theater schools because they, for a long time, they did, didn't want to admit people that had a, a, um, an accent that had a, a, maybe Swedish was their second language uh, or, or young people that were, grew up in the underprivileged areas that had a social lect or slang that would not con be considered real Swedish or, or like theater language. But this is also something that we can work with at the theaters, trying to create more multilingual performances. I mean, a lot of children uh, right now are living in a multilingual society. My, I myself was brought up bilingual and um, I have a lot of friends as well who, uh, I mean, children are used to hearing a lot of different languages in their world. So it's, it wouldn't be strange for us to do that at the theater as well. Mm. Okay. Constanza is uh, is in a funkloch, so she can't <laughs> answer. But maybe that <laughs> wants to step the in. She's, she's offline. <laughs> but about the uh, I, again, I try to uh, talk about the educational system. I, I absolutely agree, uh, Farnas, with the lingual uh, uh, li the, the the language also as a barrier, um, mm. uh, and we could talk about a lot about that. I, Still, I would go back to the idea that it could start with the educational system if, if there are other people have access to 
writers' workshops to uh, director seminars and to uh, to actor schools, then it would be a whole totally different system, uh, mm. coming from the, from from the basis to, to uh, up to the theater. Yeah, but I think also um, not being afraid to work in a multilingual context where you're not going to necessarily understand every word that somebody else is saying that, you know, there are, that one of the beautiful things about theater is that one can find new languages. Um, and within the South African context, we've seen so much of that work. We see have so many uh, amazing theater companies who've worked across languages, often using you know, several different languages in a performance. Many of our, our actors are multilingual anyway, but, but beyond that, you know, developing new ways of um, a theater language, whether it's a symbolic language or a language that uses the body as well as sound or whatever to, to find ways to communicate that, you know, and, and, and that can be the, the richness of the diversity is that actually using those languages, not as a barrier, but as a resource um, to really explore the uniqueness of everybody's contribution and our, you know, our capacity to be fully human with one another. So we slowly come to the end, the end of this discussion and we will start to go into breakout rooms where you, are, you all have the possibility to, um, to meet Farnas, Yvette and, Constan and hopefully Constanza <laughs> in, uh, in, 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 in smaller rooms to have... Uh, so choose. Ah. Uh, I don't hear nothing. Uh, yeah, no. I, I, I hello? Was, hello, hello. <laughs> they want to answer. Hello? Are you with us? Yeah. I need your headphones. Okay. So um, let's 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 uh, uh, have a, a short last statements about uh, what is important. If we we, we had a, we had a very uh, we we touched a lot of of issues like investigate more different ways of representation, of changing the education, what is quality, the question of uh, uh, who, is, who, is, um, uh, who is judging about quality in which, uh, in which um, um, context, uh, about engaging locally in your theater, doing mistakes um, and developing also uh, the language, uh, languages which have no barriers uh, uh, only by the one language. So there are many, issues on the table. So I would like to ask you if you want to have a short uh, uh, like uh, um, summary for you. What was for you the most important point you would like to talk about um, uh, in the breakout rooms? Maybe starting with uh, um, Constanza, what would you like to talk in the breakout rooms uh, when we can, can go a bit deeper into um, discussion. You're muted. We can't hear you. Ah, uh, hello. Sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. No. What I thought, like, I think it's, for me the most important is what, what kind of questions are right. To, if there is any questions or anything that people want to talk about, you know, yeah. in in this concern, because also like. Uh, that is interesting for me because then I know what people want to know. Like it just yeah. generates also like some kind of channel of uh, thought, you know. That also like yeah. what it's also nice when people come like ask you things within their subject because then you can also like expand yourself in and and just also like listen. It's, a, it's like back and forth, no? You listen because so many questions they carry already a message, no? And that's interesting yeah. for me because for me the, the 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 theme of inclusion and diversity which is for me accessibility is a very important subject so it's like that will be something i would like to talk about and it's something that is an, is an endless learning highway you know so mm -hmm. i think this is a very good thing I, you know that's that i would like to talk about mostly about that basically and this is all about the breakout rooms to hear the voices of the participants not only our voices to hear more voices more diverse voices exactly so, uh, that's the wonderful opportunity to hear more suggestions and ideas. Exactly. Yeah. Hannas? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with Constanza. I think the same. It depends t completely on what, uh, what, I mean, we've dealt with so many topics here today. Mm. So it depends on what, what, what you want and what you need us to talk about. Um, I think uh, demystification was a really good word that Yvette used in the beginning. And I think for me, that's something very important to continue to work with. Mm. And that's also something that you can work with, not only towards the audience, but also if you don't know how to go about 
you want to change but you don't know how uh, open up collaborate bring in people and just don't be afraid to show your work instead of living in the little theater bubble because that won't change anything yeah and Yvette yeah. what was the most inspiring word that you get got on this morning <laughs> well I think I think the, the word that hasn't been mentioned but a word that's sitting with me right now is courage you know I, I think that this work takes courage and I'd be interested to know what makes people feel afraid of entering the space if they are afraid of entering the space or or what people um or what motivates them to to take that courage and and, and move in, into a more diverse more equitable more accessible inclusive way of working um so what would inspire us to do that and what would and what is preventing us from doing it so yeah i'd just be interested i mean coming as a complete outsider to europe um yeah. i'd love to know to know okay. that wonderful to have critical friends from outside and i hope of course that we are not only discussing europe but also beyond the borders of europe this is so crucial in these times um so thank you um, um constanza fanas and yvette for now for the first hour of our talk um now we want to hear more voices we go into three breakout rooms and um you can decide uh, where you want to go and um, I think Teresa, who is the host of this meeting, will, will explain us the way from the webinar to the Zoom meeting. Because unfortunately, now the live streaming is ending because we don't want to, we want now to have space for, uh, for questions and work together uh, in the breakout rooms. So um, it was wonderful to have this live stream, this discussion live streamed. Now we go into the zoom meeting in, two, in three breakout rooms and there you can choose and Teresa will tell us how exactly thank you stefan i have just posted the message in the chat as well so guest list participants within zoom are now welcome to return to the auditorium on the forum platform i have included the link um, on the side you have to um, enter with your email ad registered email address um, and then you find the zoom meeting link for the next hour in the auditorium once this webinar closes please go to the auditorium for the next zoom meeting link and join us there after a very short break and then um, we will put you you can choose um, which breakout room you would like to go to with fanas constanza or um, yvette Thank you very much. Thank you very much from my side. Uh, it was a very inspiring uh, talk. Thank you, uh, uh, three panelists, Nas, Yvette, and Constanza. And we go on working on that. And of course, we have now we have to come to the point that we say, if we identify the challenges, how can we go to action? So this is our task for the next. I don't know for the next hour, the next day, and the next month, and the next year, um, say what comes out of what does that mean for political action? Maybe we can start in the breakout rooms with, with this question about how can, can we come from describing the landscape to actions for politicians? Beautiful, so, Stefan. So uh, thank you very much. It, it was not about being beautiful. It was just about being, finding a good end. And now we go to the breakout rooms and please, I'm sorry we couldn't meet all the questions, but please take them to the breakout rooms, especially those for like support and political actions, as Stefan said, that will be a great uh, issue to talk about in the in the next 40 minutes and then we can see what we want to discuss uh, in each individual group. Are we leaving? Ah, yeah, and we are not we are not changing the breakout rooms. So once you have uh, decided to come in one breakout room, you will stay with this expert.